and welcome to another episode of HISD at Home. My name is Miss McCullough and I will be your fourth grade math teacher for these videos. Hi fourth graders, I'm so excited that you guys are able to join me today and learn. I cannot wait because we are wrapping up our geometry unit this week, so that is so awesome. Remember guys how last week we went over angles and the week before we explored lines and points and rays? Well, this week we're going to combine a little bit of both of those and we're going to bring out some new vocabulary and some new terms. We're going to do a little bit of table work, work some problems and some examples, and hopefully by then you guys will have a really, really good idea of what today's lesson was about. As usual, guys, you know that for my videos, you're going to need a few things to prepare. So the first thing you're going to need is a sheet of paper or your math notebook. I don't care what you guys write on as long as you have something to write on. So whatever that I write on the table or I draw, I want you guys to go ahead and do the same, okay? So that you have these notes and you're able to reflect and refer back to them if you need to. Also, you will need a pencil or a writing utensil. A pencil is preferable because, well, it's math and we make mistakes, right? But if you don't have a pencil, it's totally fine. Just find something that you can write with. And the last and most important thing that you guys will need is that you need to make sure that you're focused during this video. So if you need to move somewhere else in your home where you're able to focus more, or if you need to let others around you know that this is the time for your math, you can go ahead and do so. I'm gonna give everybody around a minute to gather their items and then we'll return. All right, everyone, so if you have all your items and you're ready to go, go ahead and give me a thumbs up like this. Awesome work, very good. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do next is we're going to read our objective. Remember, fourth graders, that the objective is really important because what does it do? Yes, very good. The objective tells us what the knowledge and skills are that we are going to learn and acquire in today's video. So if we're going to learn about angles or we're going to learn about division or multiplication, we need to read our objectives so that we clearly understand exactly what we're going to learn and how we're going to apply what we learn. So let's go ahead and read that together now. So our objective says, Today, we will identify and draw one or more lines of symmetry for a two-dimensional figure and classify two-dimensional figures based on the presence or absence of parallel or perpendicular lines or the presence or absence of angles of a specified size. All right, guys, awesome work. Now that we read our objective, we're gonna go ahead and get right into the math. We're gonna do some table work and we're gonna work out a few problems. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys the math challenge of the week and then we'll wrap up. All right, if you're ready to go, go ahead and shake your hands for me like this. Awesome work, guys, let's go ahead and get started. All right, everyone, so let's begin with squares. And right here under square, I want us all to draw a picture of a square. And remember, squares are different than rectangles because squares have equal sides. All of the sides of a square are equal. So one side is not gonna be longer than the other. They all have equal sides. Just draw your square pretty nicely. 
All right, so that's a square. And we're gonna begin with the properties of a square. Now a square has four congruent sides. Four congruent sides. Now do you guys see this word congruent here? Congruent, everybody say that with me, congruent. Yeah, very good, congruent. So the word congruent just means that the sides are equal. So all of the sides are equal, they're congruent, right? Four equal sides. And with that being said that they're all congruent, that just means that they're equal in length. Equal in length. Okay? And remember guys, when we first started out our geometry unit, we were talking about lines and angles and we were talking about points and segments and rays. And one type of line that we focused on specifically are parallel lines. Can somebody refresh my memory and tell me what parallel lines are? Very good, yes, parallel lines are lines that are equal in distance and they go, they are the same distance apart and they are the same length and they just kind of go together. They never ever cross. So remember, parallel has two L's in the word. So I like to remember that. So parallel, so this line here is parallel, right? These two are parallel because they are the same distance apart, they don't cross, and they're the same length, okay? So that's one pair of parallel sides. And guess what? Squares have two pairs of parallel sides. So if I look at the sides on the top here, you guys can see that these two sides never cross as well, and those are parallel sides. So what I'm going to write here in our properties, go ahead, everybody write with me, that it has two pairs of parallel sides. And remember, parallel, we write it with two L's, and that's how we can remember parallel. Two L's, these two L's never cross, they never meet and they just kind of go together. So two pairs of parallel sides. And then our next thing we're gonna do is that it has, the square has four right angles. You guys remember what right angles look like? Remember right angles are 90 degree angles always 90 degrees. Remember, if you get something right, you probably have a 90. So four right angles, and we can also classify right angles if we can perfectly fit a square in the corner. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I want you guys, I encourage you to do this with me, is to draw a perfect little square in each corner of the angles so that you're able to see that there are four right angles, one, two, three, and four, and they all measure 90 degrees. All right, and then lines of symmetry. So if I were to cut this square in half, sideways or long ways, vertically or horizontally, I will be able to see that it has two lines of symmetry. So I'm gonna write a big two here, and I'm gonna draw another square right here, just so we are able to see how many lines of symmetry our square has. So if I were to cut this square in half, and I'm gonna do this like a dotted line. If I were to cut this square in half, I am able to see that this side is equivalent to this side. Now, if I wanna cut my square in half this way, horizontally, I'm also able to see that this side is equal to this side. And there's also one more line of symmetry. If I were to cut my square diagonally. See, I'm able to see that this piece is the same as this piece. So I'm going to put a little plus by the two to tell us that there's two plus or more than two lines of symmetry. But for fourth grade, it's important for us to know that there are two major lines of symmetry in a square. All right, everyone, let's move on to the next shape, which is an 
equilateral triangle everyone say that word with me equilateral very good equilateral so you guys see this word equal here now it's not spelled equal as if we were to spell the word equal with an a but equilateral it kind of sounds like equal right well these are triangles with all of the sides the same length they're equal it's like a perfect perfect triangle so I'm going to try and draw an equilateral triangle right here for you guys and see how it's kind of perfect. So all of the angles are the same. There's not one angle that's bigger than another. They're all the same size. All of the sides are the same. All of the um, lines are the same length. So that's an equilateral triangle. And what we can say here is, like I said, it has three equal sides, three equal sides. We can also see that it has three equal angles. Now that could be all the angles can be obtuse, as in really, really big, really big openings. All of the angles can be acute, like the one that I just drew here, where the angles and the openings are really, really small. And then it has lines of symmetry. So let's go ahead and draw this here on our lines of symmetry part. And we are able to see that it has one line of symmetry. So if we were to break this triangle in half, just like this, we're able to see that this side matches up to this side. So we're gonna just write a one right here so that we can see that it has one line of symmetry. And then next is hexagon, hexagon. You guys see this word hexa? This word, or this prefix, means six in Latin, six. So a hexagon is a polygon that has six sides, kind of like this, okay? So it has one, two, three, four, five, and six. You guys see that with me? Hexagon. And the properties of a hexagon, guys, is that all of the six sides are congruent. And what does congruent mean? Yep, that they're equal. They're equal in length. So all six sides are equal in length. It does not mean that one side is bigger than another. They're just all congruent and equal. Very good. The next thing, what we're going to do is... What kind of angles do these look like? Obtuse, acute, right? Yeah, they look like obtuse angles, right? Because they're very open. So we're going to write that all of the angles are obtuse. All of the angles are obtuse on hexagons. And we're going to go ahead where it says line of symmetry, and we're going to draw a hexagon right here. And... We're going to draw our hexagon and we're going to draw our line of symmetry. So let's draw a line going down vertically. Does this side match up to this side if we were to draw it perfectly? Yes, it does. Very good. And let's do it horizontally. Does this side match up to this side? Absolutely, it does. Let's draw one diagonally. Does this side match up to this side? Yes, so we're going to say that it has two or more. So we're going to draw two plus lines of symmetry for hexagons right there. All right, who's with me? Our next shape is a rectangle, a rectangle. A rectangle, remember, everybody should know how to do this. It has four sides, four angles. Okay, so just like this. It's not a square because we know that two of the sides are longer than the other pair. So this is a rectangle. So we're going to write in properties that it has four sides, four right angles. Just like a square it has four right angles, and I encourage you guys to do this again and draw the little squares on the right angle so that we know it's a right angle. And we're gonna go ahead and say that the opposite sides 
are congruent. This basically means, guys, that this side here and this side here, they're congruent. So these two sides, just like with a square, these two sides are the same and these two sides are the same length, congruent, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and draw right here our rectangle. And I want you guys this time, I'm gonna give everybody around a minute to go ahead and draw a rectangle right here and figure out how many lines of symmetry a rectangle has. So everybody draw your rectangle and tell me how many lines of symmetry a rectangle has. You have around 20 seconds. All right, everyone, so now that you went ahead and showed me your rectangle, let's look here. If we were to cut this rectangle in half, we see that this side is equivalent to this side. Now let's cut it horizontally and not vertically. Horizontally, this side is equivalent to this side. What if we were to cut this rectangle ver uh, diagonal? We were to cut it diagonally, do you think this side would match up to this side? Yeah, it could, right? So we're gonna go ahead and say that it also has two plus sides and lines of symmetry. All right, everyone, so if you're done with your chart, I want you to save this chart and put it somewhere safe where you're not gonna forget it. I promise you guys this chart will help you so much when you have questions where you have to match up shapes, where you have to find out which one is congruent, which sides are congruent, which are not. If you have to describe a shape, this chart will help you so much. So I want you to put this somewhere safe. And what we're gonna do right now is we're going to answer a few questions together. And these are questions that might be questions that are similar to the ones that you will see on your exams. So I wanted to go ahead and review these with you together today. So let's look at this first question right here. It says, in which drawing does line M appear to be perpendicular to line K? So I want to circle this word that says perpendicular. And we remember when we were talking about perpendicular lines, I'm gonna draw one right here. It's a really good strategy for me to do is I know that perpendicular lines are lines that cross each other, but they form a right angle in the corners like this. And I'm gonna draw squares in the corners to show that it forms a right angle. So I know that perpendicular lines are lines that not only intersect, not only cross each other, but they also form right angles. So let's look. And the question wants us to figure out line M and line K. So I'm gonna highlight line M and line K in every single choice that I'm given. I'm gonna highlight M and K, and this is a really good strategy for you guys to use. I encourage you to use highlighters I encourage you to ask for highlighters on the days of your exams so that you are able to identify these lines easily. A lot of the times questions like this like to trick us by involving a whole bunch of other lines that we don't need to look at. For example, here they involve line R. We don't need to pay attention to line R. We just need to pay attention to line M and line K. So let's look at M and K and F. Do these lines cross or even intersect each other? No, they don't. So are these lines perpendicular? No, what type of line is M and K in example F? These are parallel lines, very good. These are parallel lines and we know that they're parallel because these lines don't cross. They're the same distance apart and they 
are going together. So they're parallel. Very good. Let's look at example G. Now in G, we have M here and K here. Well, we see that M and K intersect, so that's super good, right? But do they form a right angle? No, this angle here is obtuse. This one's obtuse. This one is what? Acute, very good, and this one is acute. So these do not form parallel perpendicular lines. These do not form perpendicular lines. Let's look at H, example H. It has line K right here and line M right here. Do these lines even intersect each other? No, they're so far apart they don't even intersect. That one's incorrect. And let's look at J, the last answer choice. So M here and K here. Do these lines intersect? Yep, they intersect. Do they form a right angle in the corner? Absolutely they do. I see a right angle right here, another one right here. I see one right here and one right here. So these form right angles in the corners. They intersect perfectly. So these are perpendicular and our answer choice is J. Do you guys see how I went ahead and did process of elimination? I used my strategy of circling what it wanted us to find. I went ahead and drew what I knew a perpendicular line to be. And then I went ahead and highlighted the lines that they asked me to find so that I know that I don't have to be distracted by line R. I'm only focusing on M and K. All right, guys, let's look at this next question together. Oscar draws two lines on his paper. So Oscar draws two lines. We already can go ahead and highlight that information because it tells us that Oscar draws not one, but two lines on his paper. We can see that the lines, it says here, the lines are always, always, I love that word, always one inch apart and do not intersect. So these lines are one inch apart and they do not intersect. And it says, which term can be used to name what Oscar drew? So did Oscar draw perpendicular lines? Look right here, guys. We just answered a question on perpendicular lines. So perpendicular lines, they intersect. And it says here that these do not intersect. So did Oscar draw perpendicular lines? No, he did not. So let's cross that off. Let's look at this one, parallel lines. What do we know about parallel lines? Can somebody tell me? We just did it when we did our chart together. Yes, parallel lines never intersect, right? And they just go together and they're the same distance apart. So Oscar drew two lines, always one inch apart and do not intersect. So could it be parallel lines? It could be, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little dot next to this one. And it says intersecting lines. Well, we already know that they do not intersect. So if they do not intersect, they obviously cannot be intersecting lines. And then this says line segments. Well, I mean, line segments are just basically like this. Remember, it's a piece of a line. So it could be line segments, but we know line segments to be pieces of a line. And that's not really a segment. We're not, the question doesn't have anything to do with segments. It's asking us what type of line. We want to go ahead and circle G because our answer is parallel lines. So we know that parallel lines are lines that never intersect and they're always the same distance apart. Very good guys. We're going to go ahead and solve one more. All right, let's look at this one. Lana drew these figures. So Lana drew figure L, figure M, figure N, and figure P. Which of these figures appear to have both a horizontal line of symmetry and a vertical line of symmetry? So one thing that I'm going to do here as a strategy is I'm going to write an H for horizontal, and I know that horizontal is like this. Think of the horizon. When you see the sunrise on the horizon, the horizon is always a line that goes like this. So those are horizontal lines. Next, I'm gonna draw a V. And I know that V is vertical. And think of your vertebrae, your vertical column in your back, your vertebrae. It's straight up and down, just like this. Okay, so horizontal is like this and vertical is like this. 
I'm also going to go ahead and highlight the word symmetry. We just talked a little bit about symmetry when we were doing our chart. Can somebody refresh my memory on what symmetry is? Yes, very good. Symmetry is basically where if we are able to draw a line in half, horizontally or vertically or even diagonally, if we, we're able to see if both sides of this figure match up. Let's start with a vertical line on figure L. So if I draw a vertical line on figure L, just as I did here, do you guys think that this side is equal to this side? Yeah, so we know that it has a vertical line. Now let's check horizontally because the question says horizontal and vertically. All right, so horizontally, does this side match with this side? No, it does not. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look through my options here and I'm going to cross out all of the ones that have figure L in it. So B says figure L and figure N. So I'm going to cross out B because I know the answer cannot be B because figure L does not have a horizontal and a vertical line of symmetry. And look at D. D says figure L as well. And I'm going to cross out D because I know that figure L does not have both a horizontal and a vertical line of symmetry. Next, let's look at figure M. M says if we are able to vertically draw a line down the center of M, does this side match up to this side? Yes, it does. And if we are draw, drawing a horizontal line through M, does this side match this side? Yes, it does. So we know that M is a good option, and I'm going to put a check right next to M. Now let's look at N. Let's look at N together. If we're able to draw a horizontal line through N, does the top part match the bottom part? Yes, absolutely it does. Now let's do a vertical line through N. All right, so we have a vertical line through N. Does this side match this side? No, it does not, because we have a nice little pointed top here, and we have a flat, flat bottom part right here. So this does not match. I'm gonna go through and through process of elimination, I'm gonna see if I have an N option here. I don't, I just says, I just have an M only and an M and a P. So let's look at P. All right, so if we see P and we draw a line vertically down the center of P, does this side match up with this side? Yes, it does. Let's draw a horizontal line through P. Does this top half match the bottom? Absolutely, it does. So which are the two figures that have horizontal and vertical lines of symmetry? M and P, so we can go ahead and circle C, that is figure M and figure P. We went ahead and tried it out with L and it didn't work and we tried it out with N and it didn't work. M and P are the only two figures that have horizontal and vertical lines of symmetry. Very, very good guys. All right, everyone, so this ends our video for geometry. I'm so excited that you guys were able to join me and learn a little bit more today. Let's go ahead and get right into the math challenge. Remember, guys, that the math challenge is just a little challenge that I give you every week where you can apply what we learned in today's video to your everyday life, or you can go ahead and apply what you learned in today's video to work out a few problems. So let's figure out what the challenge is today. Ready? Awesome. All right, guys, so the math challenge for this week is really similar to the math challenge that we had last week. But this week, I want you guys to draw some random objects like flowers, houses, fruits, maybe cars, anything that you want to draw. And once you're done drawing these things, I want you to find lines of symmetry in your drawings. So just like we did and we practiced earlier with our figures, I want you to do the same thing and see if there's any lines of symmetry. And once you're done with that, guys, I encourage you to take it a step further and find if there are lines of symmetry in real life objects, such as objects around your house, maybe furniture, maybe dishes. Are there lines of symmetry there? And if there are, go ahead and jot those down and make a note of them. 
And guys, as always, I encourage you to keep practicing your geometry vocabulary by finding items around your home, such as lines, angles, different types of polygons that we've covered and such. All right, guys, I hope you can go ahead and do the challenge for me this week. All right, everyone, so now that we know what the math challenge is, please be sure that you apply your learning today into your math challenge, that you go ahead and find examples of these items around, and that you finish up strong with this geometry unit by practicing, right? Practice makes perfect. Well, everyone, I hope you all have a lovely week and that you guys are productive and you pay attention in your classes and you keep going because you guys are so, so smart. All right, well, I can't wait to see you guys next week as we're gonna explore a new unit. Bye everyone, have a lovely week.